next point we come on to is the slide that you now see in front of you, which has prominently displayed on it the words, CO2 is only a trace gas. CO2 in the atmosphere as a percentage of the atmosphere by volume in, in 1750 was 0.03%. By 2010, that had gone up to 0.04%. And the change, therefore, is 0.01% of the atmosphere by volume, or one part of the atmosphere in 10,000 that wasn't CO2 before is CO2 now, after 250 years. Now, what the professor has to say about this slide is quite extraordinary. He says, the number of errors Chris Monckton makes is so enormous, it would take a thesis to go through every single one of them. So we get an insult which, frankly, no academic trying to correct a layman doing his best about the science ought to have come up with. And we have this kind of insulting language all the way through the professor's presentation. And he says he's trying to pick just a representative sample of the errors that he says I made, but I think as we've seen up until now in this talk of mine, actually the errors are entirely on his side of the account, and so it is going to be again now. And what he says about me is this. He says, he says, that's I say, that the change in CO2 as a percentage by volume, and of course we're talking of CO2 in the atmosphere, so it's as a percentage of the atmosphere by volume, is 0.01%. Well, of course, that's exactly what it is. And he says, and this is the danger of small movements. What people would infer from this is that there hasn't been much of a change in CO2. Now, technically, what he, Chris Monckton, is saying is CO2 as a percentage of the atmosphere hasn't changed very much. The inference that people get is incorrect based on these numbers. And let's help him with his math. He kindly suggests that he, as a fluid mechanics engineer, would like to help me, a mathematician, albeit not one who has a piece of paper saying he's a mathematician, with my math. Let's help him with his math, he says. Let's get these numbers in a little more detail. And in fact, we're going to get them, as you'll see, in a little less detail. And it's in less detail that he conceals what's really going on. But before we do move on, let's just note that what he's saying here is he knows perfectly well that I'm talking of CO2 as a percentage of the atmosphere because he mentions that particular phrase in what he himself says. So then he goes on to say, Chris Monckton suggests that because carbon dioxide is a trace gas, it cannot affect the climate. Well, now, in fact, at no point did I suggest that it cannot affect the climate. The question has always been how much effect on the climate it has. It is settled science with which I have at no, at no point ever argued that greenhouse gases, if added to the atmosphere, will cause warming. But no, he does what he does all the way through the talk, this professor. He misstates what I say, puts it in his words, which are not my words, and indeed are contrary to anything I've ever said, and then attacks his version of what I said, which have not, is not, of course, what I actually said. So he says, CM suggests that because carbon dioxide is a trace gas, it can't affect the climate, and the increase is 0.01%. Well, remember, he knows that we're talking 0.01% of the entire atmosphere because he used the phrase in the earlier quotation I made. He knows that's what we're talking about. So here is what he says. Now he's going to help me with my math. He says, if we look at the math, the current level, well this is of CO2 in the atmosphere, is 390. Now this is a man who takes me to task on a number of occasions in the presentation for not getting my units right. So he simply says the current level is 390, he doesn't mention a unit. We'll come on to why he doesn't later. And then he says the pre-industrial level is 280. And once again, no mention of the units. That's a 39% increase in carbon dioxide, not a 0.01% increase. Well, yes, it is. Actually, it's nearly a 40% increase in carbon dioxide as a percentage of the carbon dioxide that was there before. 
But as, he's he, as he has already himself admitted, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere as a percentage of the whole atmosphere. And it's gone up, and this is the fact, from 0.03% to 0.04%, and it's taken 250 years to get there, and that is an increase of 0.01% of the atmosphere. Those figures are obviously correct. Or at least obviously correct only if he tells you what the units are that he was talking about. The current level, he said, that's the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, is 390. What he doesn't do, he doesn't tell you that that's not 390 parts per thousand, it's 390 parts per million. There's hardly anything there. And again, the pre industrial level is 280, and he doesn't tell you that too, is parts per million. So now, let's help him with his math, shall we? Because 390 parts per million is, of course, 0.4%, uh, near enough, and 280 parts per million is 0.03%, near enough. You can go to any mathematician, don't believe me, and they'll tell you that I've got that right. And the difference between the two, 110, and we now know what the units are, he doesn't tell you very carefully, but I'm telling you, is parts per million. That, of course, is 0.01% of the atmosphere by volume, as I said on my slide, and as he perfectly well knew, because he himself uses the phrase in an earlier paragraph. So we're looking here, I'm afraid, at a deliberate deception on the part of the professor. He withholds from his audience the units in which carbon dioxide is measured, parts per million, because once you realize it's 390 or 280 or 110 parts per million, then you can very soon work out the percentage or get a mathematician or a pocket calculator to help you and realize that my figures are indeed absolutely correct. It is only by concealing the unit and deliberately ignoring that he knows perfectly well that I'm talking about percentage of the volume of the atmosphere and not a percentage increase in CO2 that he gets away with the lie that I have got my math wrong. Now, I think that's a very serious matter. It is one of the plainest points at which the furtiveness of the deception is evident, the method he is using to deceive is evident, and the fact that it's an outright lie is evident because we have his quotation to the effect that what I was talking about was CO2 as a percentage by volume of the entire atmosphere. So that is a very interesting and, to my mind, a very disfiguring episode in the way the professor is conducting this apparent evisceration of my talk. Because he's not giving me a fair go here, is he? Nobody can say that that was a fair or rational approach. And he also attributes to me opinions that I have at no point expressed, whether in this talk or elsewhere. I have never said that carbon dioxide has no influence on temperature. My question has always been how much influence on temperature it has, and I don't think it has very much influence on temperature. And indeed, if we look at uh, a subsequent slide, which I'm showing to you now, this is called the science is settled lie, it is entirely clear that one of the things I'm thinking about quite hard in my presentation is how much warming CO2 uh, actually causes. And I show that in 1896, Arrhenius thought it was 5 Celsius degrees. Now, in fact, by 1906, Arrhenius had brought that uh, down to about 1.6 degrees. He himself had adjusted his figure, but you will never find anyone in the climate extremist camp referring to the 1906 paper of Arrhenius. That's far too inconvenient. Then we have Hansen in 1988 saying it's 4.2 Celsius of warming for a doubling of CO2 concentration. Then the IPCC in 1995, 2001 and 2007 respectively comes up with 3.8, 3.5 and 3.26 Celsius respectively, going down like an elevator. The IPCC is constantly revising downward its estimates 
of how much warming CO2 causes. They're moving, in other words, in the direction of the territory where I think it is, which also appears on this slide right down there at the bottom. You'll see it says 0.5 Celsius for a doubling of CO2. You can see the large letters, two times CO2 on the slide. That's what we're talking about here. That's what I talked about in my talk. And you can see that not only Moncton, in a published scientific paper in uh, Physics and Society for July 2008, if you want to go and look at it, work out that it's around half a Celsius degree for a doubling of CO2 concentration, maybe one Celsius degree at most. But also you'll see Armstrong et al. by using forecasting techniques, Douglas et al. by examining the tropical upper troposphere, Spencer, Spencer et al. examining clouds, Paltridge et al. examining the moisture in the upper atmosphere, and Linzen comparing the uh, change in sea surface temperature with the change in outgoing radiation. These all come up, all these papers, in the peer-reviewed literature in this degree. So any allegation by the professor, that I have said that CO2, because it's a trace gas, cannot affect the climate, is simply a false allegation. I never said any such thing. More importantly, I actually said the opposite.